Yes, sir. Welcome to the lecture on transportation engineering. So, see what happened. In today's lecture, we will learn about the intersections. So, we have two types of intersection. One is intersection at grade, and another one is grade separated intersection. What is intersection at grade? If two or more roads, it can be three, it can be four, it can be any number. If any number of roads, and that is actually more than two, if uh, roads more, uh, more than two numbers are meeting almost at the same level, and that kind of intersection is called the intersection at grade. When the grade separated intersections are, where two or more roads are separated by a grade or by a level, so that they are not meeting on the same level, that kind of that kind of intersection is called grade separated intersections. So first of all, we will learn about the intersection at grades. What is intersection at grade? The two or more roads which are meeting at almost at the same level, that is intersection at grade. So before designing the intersection at grade, we have certain requirements. What are what are uh, what types of requirements we should keep in our mind before designing this intersection at grade? Those are listed here. We will discuss each and every one one by one. So first of all, uh, the first one is the conflict area should be as small as possible. Means what? So for this intersection, we will take an example of an uh, intersection at grade. Will arrive on the intersection. 
access to all the next row and the section first of all.
you should have the proper adequate visibility. That means it should have sufficient cyber distance. If there are bridges obstructing the vehicle, then it will restrict the visibility. And the vehicle who is coming from this direction will not be able to see the vehicle which is coming from another direction. And it can also be the one of the and it can also result in the accident. So there is adequate visibility. If it is not if it is not available, then we have to look for some other alternative measures. And we have to maintain or we have to provide the adequate visibility. The proper width of pavement, then the proper sign, that is proper traffic sign, as per Motor Vehicle Act, we have to install on the road so that the vehicle, that can guide the vehicle, the drivers of the vehicle, and they can maintain the traffic regulations as well as good lighting. So the most important basic requirements of the intersection and trade. Then we have some of the forms of intersection. We will discuss. There are some of the forms that we can have the T intersections. The cross intersections, staggered intersections, skewed intersection, skewed cross. That is, but there is simple type of, and the skewed has started here. So I mean, we have to discuss each and every type of form when it should be turned towards the skewed. So that is skewed. Then we have the skewed cross. This is skewed, staggered, and then we have this one. Uh, let's draw the figure for this, and let, let's try to understand what kind of uh, how it will look in reality. Let's see the first report, the T. The T intersection. So, if you uh, look the plan, the this the plan of this intersection will look almost exactly like a T letter that is given in English. This is the T letter. So, the T intersection will also be similar thing. This is the T intersection. The cross. It is nothing but the plus. Can you remember this? The plus sign. This kind of that is a cross. This is a T means. What is this approaching road? The other approaching road is this, so that this will be this will form a cross. Then we have the straggled one. This is main road. One of the road is making at this. This is one of the kind of T. Another T can be formed here. So this is the staggered intersection. Staggered form of intersection. And so this cube. This skewed sometimes looks like the Y. This is the skew. If we take this skewed cross section, then this will be the skewed cross section. Simple cross is this, which looks almost like a plus sign. We'll just draw it. This will be the skewed cross. Then there is skewed sticker. We can do this thing. This 
is intersection at the end we are having the ungeneralized intersection as the ungeneralized means there is nothing to guide the traffic there is no channel to guide the traffic it is just a paved area as there is nothing is no structures available for guiding the traffic that means there is no restriction for the vehicle the vehicle can go anywhere in reality if you understand the vehicle is coming from this direction he is supposed to move something like this to take a left turn but the person who traffic because he is not the only one person who is approaching from this direction there is some other vehicle will be those are uh, approaching from this opposite direction or those are approaching from this adjacent X. so this person to just try to reach at the towards his destination he will take a turn towards any side he can go something like this also he can go something like this like this like this and he can go like this also so what will happen it will increase nothing but the conflict area which is are one of the requirement that the conflict area should be as small as possible. So it is going, so this is again creating the conflict for us for designing a generalized intersection. So this is one of the drawback of this unchallenged intersection as there is no channel, there is no restriction for the vehicle, they can move as per their wish as well as they will, uh, they will increase the conflict area which will result in increasing the number of accidents. As we are saying that it has so many drawbacks, we say that it is the lowest class of intersection type of intersection. We have discussed this one, if manual conflict area will be definitely there, then we have planned in this unchallenged intersection. We have two types, one is planned, another one is flared intersection. What is planned means there is no extra bridges provided for the turning of traffic. Those kind of intersections are called the planned intersection. When the extra width is provided at this intersection for the turning of weather, those are called the flared intersection. So let's see first of all this plane intersection, some of the forms of this plane. We will see some of the intersection of plane type. This is T intersection. Plane type. This is no extra width. Same width is available outside the intersection, same width is available at the intersection. This is T intersection of plane type. If I'll call this T intersection of flared type, and what is the way of, what we have discussed about flared intersection? When the extra width is provided at the intersection for the turning moment, then it is called the flared intersection. So if you want to convert it into the flared type, we have to do some of the arrangement, we have to provide the extra width, something like this. We can see here, this is the normal breadth of the road. This is the normal breadth of the road. Why at the intersection? The width of the road is this much. We have provided the extra width. The roads have been widened at the intersections. So it can be easy. So on the ease of turning movement. So this is called a T intersection of flared type. This is T intersection, T intersection of flared type. Similarly, let's draw one of the form of the cross type. Intersection. 
This is very fair. Circular, elliptical, square, 
rectangular determined tangent there are some of the shapes of the rotary so as per the objective as per the scenario as per the situation we decide or as per the number of legs available also we decide which shape of the rotary we will adopt then the radius of rotary that we will enter this will be enough to be as small as possible the width of carriage way then width of rotary roadway this will be what is the width of rotary roadway Yeah. 
the Spanish at the center. You can have the squarish with round the ground as well. This is generally preferred. This is the square edge. In the rectangle, there will also be rounded at the place of the square, there will be a rectangular shape. Which is coming like this. This is 
G. Here's the traffic which is coming like this. This is C. And one more kind of movement will be here. The traffic is coming before directly like this. This will be, let's call it as D. So, this is the traffic which is leaving, involving this C and B, which I have called it more Z. So, this proportion of traffic, this will be leaving traffic divided by total traffic. Divided by, so this we can take B plus C divided by total traffic will be A plus B plus C plus D. So, these are like this, by using all these parameters, we can calculate the capacity of roadway, uh, rotary roadway.
Now we are ready with all the parameters. Directly we need to put all this value in the formula and we will try to get the capacity. So we will use the formula for capacity Q equals to that is like 280W into 1 plus E by W into 1 minus P by 3 divided by 1 plus W by L. Everything is known to us. 280 into the W, W we have calculated as 8 meters. 1 plus E, that is average energy weight, which is 4.5. We have W, it is nothing but the 8 meters. 1 minus P, we have got as 0.5 divided by 3. The whole is divided by 1 plus W is 8 meter. Divided by this is 35, that is L. So if we we'll solve this, we will get the capacity of the Nautilus roundabout. If we we'll solve this, we will get it as 237.08. The vehicle cannot be in traction, so we will take the immediate next try number 2374 PCU per hour. So that means this road trip is not can handle 2374 two, number of passenger cars in one hour. Why? The maximum traffic is available is 2000 only. That means Q is greater than the total traffic and the line these are uh, load rays safe. How we can calculate the capacity of a road train? Simply just try to get the required parameter first and then just put all this value in this empirical formula which is suggested by TRRL and try to get the capacity. And then just look at whether it is safe or unsafe. If it is unsafe, then we have to alter some of the parameters and we have to look for the capacity once again. So, in this case, we got the 2374 PC per hour which is greater than the total traffic 200 PC per hour, hence this available round the is safe. Thank you.